Hello, مرحبا وصحلا يا شباب to part 5 of this tutorial series so in the last uh, video we added all the models um, like task fetch response to, to get a list or a specific task and a model for creating a task, task create request and here this uh, class to update a task, task update request, okay that's great and now as i mentioned in the previous video we will create a new package core to have um, some core functionality for our app core that's great and now we are creating a new class inside of it we will call it view state and the, as the name applies or suggests I don't know how to say it in English. Um, this class will be used to to show when what kind of state the view is. So, but this is a sealed class, yeah, because it a sealed class in Kotlin. I don't know um, if you don't know, it just holds other classes. A sealed class, it's a seal. <laughs> um, it holds other classes like data classes or objects and so on, object classes. So we have a data class in here. But let's make a line break to make it more visible. And I hope uh, this is not too small for you. Uh, I mean, I can adjust the uh, size, but um, but yeah, just let me just pause the video. I hope it's not too small. So I just adjust the size to 16. I hope it's not too big, not too small. Let me just know in the comment section below. So a data class success, I will call when it's everything got success, successfully executed. So um, this will be a generic class. So we have a generics here. T is any. Okay. Okay. So basically what we are saying here, here can be, it can be a title of any and we will have data in here the data will be also generic value here t and yeah success will be inherit from few state um but few state i have to make some adjustments in here so this needs to be also t type of any so we can pass any argument in here. Uh, so okay, okay, that's great. But if we have a success case, then for sure we have an error case. So let's do this. And uh, let's call it error, as I said um yeah here we just we can get rid of this here the error will be of course the type of exception that is ha happening so let's call it exception exception and here we can pass nothing okay that's great one more thing we need an object of type loading when the ui is currently loading and this will also, of course, inherit from view state. Here we can also pass nothing. And just let me just, so the first case will be loading. So I this, this is why I put it here up. And otherwise we have success or error. And we will have, we need Slate then um, to extract data from our live data objects in our view model. And that's, that's why we need a method called extract data. So, so we will also have type T a generic value and can be nullable. And let's set the getter for it. The getter is when the current instance so the current instance is a type of success is success 
then return the data. Otherwise, if it's a type is if it's an instance of error, got that. Okay. Error, then it's null. And the last thing we check if it's still loading, then it's also null. So this is our else case. Okay. Oh, that's good. Let's remove this import. I just pressed uh, Control Option and O. And so that's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, our view state. This will be later used. This class will be later used for our view model. And this for the live data objects of our view model. And yes. Okay, that's great. We have one core class. Let's move on to the next core class. Okay, let's do this. This will be class. Um, it's from an abstract class, but I don't have. I don't think we have here something like abstract. Okay, this will be our base repository. Repository. Base repository. Nice. Okay, this will be an abstract class, like I said. And yes, 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 yes. Da, 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 da. Good, 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 good. Uh, let me just this. I think I will just copy some values out of the tutorial here, so so I'm a little bit faster and can explain. I think a little bit better. So let's copy this. Okay, okay. Okay, good. We have everything what we need. And uh, now the thing is, let me just explain to you. For our base repository, we need this will this class will be used to inherit from. And even though I'm a I'm against inheritance, I I, I prefer more composition, but nonetheless for some sometimes it's useful. So we have here some constant values. As you can see for a bad request, unauthorized or not found for the 404, uh, for the 400 cases, as you can see here, uh, these things will be used here. And something wrong will be, you know, if it's else than 400 in the other 400 case. It will be also used in another class later on. And as you can see, we have here uh, also generic class, I mean generic method, um, which can be, you know, used by any other data type, like the name suggests generic. For the success case, here we have few state success and the handle exception, then we will get the exception and get the few state error. And yes, that's basically it. This will be our parent class for our task repository, which we are going to create later on. And yes, you, I think it will be more clearer when you see the use of this class. Otherwise, just drop me something in the comments section below. And if you have questions or so. Good. Let's move on with the next class. A uh, few binding fragment. Okay, a few binding fragment. Uh, this will be also an abstract class, so also used for inheritance. 
No, 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 that, but first we need all the generic values to pass. Okay. Of type U binding. And inherits from fragment. So our fragments will use this view binding fragment to inherit from. So we get rid of some of the boilerplate code for on create view and so on and for the binding stuff. You will see when it gets used how useful this class can be. We have an abstract function which needs to be uh, overridden by the by the children. Create binding. And when I say regarding abstract, uh, abstract class and inheritance, I'm not completely against it, but you should know when to use it and you should use it carefully and not too much. Not inherit, inherit, inherit. This class inherits from another class, another class, another class, and you have, I don't know, I have such a big family tree, you cannot decide where the logic comes from. That's, and as I've seen things like four or five hierarchies or so of inheritance, this is catastrophic. So we have here an inflator in our create binding. Inflator. And this will be of type layout inflator. Layout inflator, here, here it is. And container, the container is a view group, type view group. And this can be nullable. And yeah. It returns some kind of view binding, so let's to, let's put out this the generic value in here. And one more thing, I just forgot about the protected uh, uh, field. A protected field is necessary late in it var binding. Let's call it binding. Give it all the generic value. Okay. And let's and let's overwrite on create view. On create view. Okay, as you can see, we have some things in here. That's great. But let's remove this stuff in here. And let's Say, I mean, you can remove this stuff and say this is a single line expression where we just don't need a method body actually. I mean, this is our method body. Create binding, let's put inflator in here, then the container. As you can see, I just took the name of the overridden class and say and to as well binding equals equals the iterator and that's the truth okay that's basically it's i hope this is understandable uh, let me just explain it one more time to you mm, this view binding fragment will be used by our other fragments it will inherit from it so um and because we can when we do the um, data binding with the layouts we just can pass in here the oh uh, sorry we can just pass in here the layout we are using like the xml layout which will be here somewhere like the activity main layout and we just we don't need to overwrite the on grade view it will be already done for us because there are generic values in here like you see here yeah the iterator for instance and this is just with the create binding and um, with the create binding method we would just have uh, everything set up so we don't so we can use of generics to avoid code duplication i think it will be easier to understand when I have done, when I've shown the real fragments we are using. But yeah, just keep in mind, view binding fragment will be our parent class. And because of these methods in here, we will avoid code duplication boilerplate code for setting up the 
the, the, the to linking the, the XML layout with the fragment. Okay, I hope this was understandable somehow and see you in the next tutorial in part six. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video and see you in the next one. Ilalika ya shabab.